Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Church as we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are glad you're here with us today and especially welcome all visitors worshiping with us. Our celebrant this morning is Father Dan. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Evelyn and Carl Meckling. Please stand. For you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye, and the shadow of your wings protect me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My beloved, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, if I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, I pray for me to the Lord our God, the Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Yes, yeah, see it at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is arranged with you, and in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in him service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, given you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. 
Give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all people, his wondrous deeds. Give, give the Lord glory and honor. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord glory do his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs his people with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion or you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. They handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And that he said to them, then we pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The gospel of the Lord. And name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My beloved family, the Lord Jesus, our anointed King. When you and I study the commandments of God, 
and we look at that fifth commandment, it says plain and simple, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt protect thy body and thy neighbor's body. Thou shalt not put thy body in harm's way or thy neighbor's body in harm's way. Because why? It is a temple of God. The human being belongs to God. That's not hard to understand. Now, before I get into the next part, I want to bring this to those who have to incur an abortion. I know there are many reasons why. Believe me, I've walked with many women and I cried with them. So there are reasons. So this is nothing to do pointing fingers at anybody. We're just talking about the evilness of this and we need to not allow it to continue. But again, when we go into the act of abortion, we eliminate a life. Before there was always this doubt, is this really a life or this is not a life or what? And now the doctors, the scientists and all say, it is life. From conception all the way, it is life. Why? Because now they can make a child from a fertilized egg outside the womb. And course, all the way up to nine months, you have an infant in the womb, a real human being. And because of this particular evil called abortion, perhaps that child or another child may never see the light of day. Do we have this right to be this type of person to take away Life? No, we don't. As I said, it's plain and simple in the Ten Commandments. The, the fifth commandment, thou shalt not what, kill, thou shalt not murder. It's not something that I like to talk about, but yet it's something we have to think about. I'm not telling people to do something or to take action. That's your choice, how you want to. But we must remember what is happening. You see, everybody thinks it's just stops there. Oh no, now because we've gone this far, we're gonna to go to the next part. What is that? Elimination of life outside the birth of a child. In other words, from childhood to adulthood to seniorhood, if I feel there's a certain group of people that are hindered to society or cost too much or whatever, I can eliminate. I don't think for a moment it's not happening. How many times I was called down to the so-called wards where they have the observation. You're not part of the hospital, but you're a, a part of it in some sense. There's a nurse and a bunch. And how many times I found people not giving, giving dividend food or meds, because somebody decides it's time for that person to go. Nursing homes the same way. And you see it over all the different areas of, of the world. The medical people and government people are now saying, who's going to live, who's not going to live? Is it scary? It certainly is. I'm a senior. So I know if I think I'm in somebody that's incapacitated or can't function properly, I could be here very easily be eliminated. Yeah, it worries me. Now we're playing another game. We're playing God. We'll tell the world who lives, who doesn't. And we used to scream about other dictators and uh horrific uh, leaders who did so much atrocities, but look what we're doing. And no one's paying attention, no one's saying anything, everybody just kind of shrug it off, well fine. You can do that if you wish, but remember well, there is a commandment, thou shalt not kill. We must protect life from the moment, we can say from the moment of conception all the way to the end. 
We must nurture life. We must have life. I have some more beautiful friendships for some beautiful Down syndrome children. One of them so happens to be my godchild. I love her dearly. To say she's someone that's a hindrance, someone that can't get love, oh, don't you go there with me there. She's my joy. How many times she'd come around and just hug me? And what a joyful moment at that time. Yes, God's children are beautiful. And they need to be protected. And they need our help to make sure there is that protection. As I said, one day it could be us if we don't do something. So be careful, be very be aware. Let's just put it that way. Be aware of this evil that's going on in the world today. We become stronger than God. We are now in town. Who shall live, who shall not live? As Mother Teresa said one time, I conclude this little homily. The fruit of abortion shall be a nuclear war. And she said it so strongly, and she meant it. So let us pray that we do something to where we're able to bring a joy to God's heart, that we eliminate these evils so that you and I are protected, and especially more, the helpless ones, those who are sick, those who are Down syndrome, are being protected. And again, those in the womb who are extremely helpless and depending on us to bring them into this world. So let us ask God to give us that wisdom to be the protector of all life and even the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Let us recite together our creed. I believe. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father of all angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Home substantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, who came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, as incarnate of the Virgin Mary, I became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, Lord, to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And the Father and the Son are glorified. The spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism. Forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Let us lift up our hearts and prayer, asking God to grant ear to our petitions. For the Pope, bishops, and priests, may they inspire in all people the desire for a true relationship with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that civil leaders will use their authority to protect and provide for the poor, the oppressed, and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. That our Lord will bless all parents in their role as missionaries to their children as they bring Jesus to our society, our parishes, and our schools. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that God's people may be active in carrying out their civic responsibilities and may choose leaders who will build a society that respects all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish will grow in devotion and love for the Holy Eucharist 
and be filled with the charity and compassion of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill or experiencing suffering, may they be healed according to God's will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Evelyn and Carl Meckling, for whom this Mass is offered, Teresa Lighty, Olin Barnes, Kathleen Hinderer, may they be received into the everlasting banquet of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our Book of Intercessions, the intentions of the St. Thomas Powerline prayer team, and the prayers which we hold in our hearts. May they be united to the prayers of Mary, the Mother of God, to the prayers of St. Thomas the Apostle, and to the prayers of all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Instead of concluding our petitions, we're going to recite together the election prayer for life. It's on both sides, so remember to flip over to the other side when we get completely the front side. So let us begin our prayer together. O oh God, we announce you today as Lord, not only of individuals, but of nations and governments. We thank you for the privilege of being able to organize ourselves politically and knowing that political loyalty does not have to mean disloyalty to you. We thank you for your law, which our founding fathers acknowledged and recognized as higher than any other law. We thank, thank you for the opportunity that this election has been worth for us. Do not decide sound not, not only to vote, but, but to influence countless others to vote, vote and to vote, vote correct. correctly. Lord, Lord, we pray, pray that your people may be awakened. Let, let them, them realize that while politics is not their salvation, their response to you requires that they be politically active. Awaken your same hands that did not obtain prayer by the hands that pulled the lever of the holy war, by the same eyes that read your word, by the eyes that read the names on the ballot, and that do not cease to be Christians when they enter the voting war. Awaken your people to a commitment to justice, to the sanctity of marriage and the family, and to the dignity of each individual Please be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. By through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Through the earth, work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation. Through your goodness, we see the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. O oh Lord, who wash away my iniquity? Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people form as one by the unity of the Trinity. May the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with all the choirs of the holy angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By setting down your spirit upon them, light the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed into willing to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we. Therefore, if we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the child of salvation. Give me thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together by our beloved Holy Father Francis and our Bishop Earl and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Blessed Joseph, her spouse, of the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be coherent to eternal life, I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and never. At the Savior's command, for our divine teaching, we dare to say, Our God, who art in heaven, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses. To temptation, of the Lord. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace to grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now on our sins by the faith of your church, and grace you grant her peace and unity, and accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. May this mingling the body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who we'll receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father, work of the Holy Spirit, be your death gave life to the world. Be me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me ever be parted from you.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Just a kind of reminder, remember to keep your social distancing as you come down to receive our beloved Lord Jesus Christ in the living bread, the most holy Eucharist. Those who wish to receive on the tongue, I ask kindly try to be towards the end of the line because I always sanitize my hands after I put Jesus on the individual's tongue. I have no problem doing it. I'm very honored to give you Jesus that way. But help me too. Those who do not have a mask on, I kindly ask you to be the last person receive in the line. I thank everyone for the cooperation.
Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things may be helped by what you give in this present age. We pray for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, Archangel, Ephesus, and Ban, be our protection.
Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Church as we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're so glad you are here and especially welcome all visitors worshiping with us today. Our celebrant this morning is Father Bill. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. I have called out because you answer me, O God. Incline your ear and hear my words. Keep me, O Lord, like the apple of your eye. Protect me under the shadow Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for 
ever, ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by name, giving you a title though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you knew me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. 
for our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax of Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that, he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. last number of weeks we've been hearing parables of our Lord Jesus. These are his last days. He's come into triumph in Jerusalem. Remember Palm Sunday with everybody was cheering him on with palm branches in their hands singing Hosanna to the King. Hosanna to the Son of David. There was a lot of support for Jesus. The first thing he did was he cleansed the temple. That's when he began to make even greater enemies of the religious leaders at the time. There was a ruling body that we need to know about to, to understand what happened in our gospel today. There was a ruling body named the Sanhedrin. It was like a senate. So there were a lot of politics going on. In the senate you had the chief priest. He was like the president of the Sanhedrin. You had the Sadducee party which was the party that ran the temple. So the chief priests and the Sadducees, and then you had the Pharisees. They were religious Jews who were lay. They weren't priests, but they supported the Jewish people. They didn't like Rome. They liked the temple and its 
sacrifices. So in some ways they aligned themselves with the Sadducees to keep peace. And then you had another group, they were secular Jews, non-religious Jews called the Herodians. And like their name, they supported King Herod. They were a secular group, very much in favor of Rome. So they were the opposite, you might say, of the Pharisees, opposite ends of the spectrum. And then you had another party, the, the Zealot Party, who was completely against Rome, who would not pay taxes to Rome and saw you as an enemy if you did. Their motto was to serve God alone. Serve God alone. So now we get a picture of the trap that, that they set for Jesus. The Herodians and the Pharisees on opposite ends, really they were enemies any other day, but they had a common enemy now in Jesus. So they banded together and they thought, we're gonna present Jesus with this problem of paying taxes. If Jesus says, yes, pay taxes, the zealots will get him. The zealots were the radical ones who would even kill people who supported Rome. They were, they had the Sicarii, you know, they were the dagger carriers who would go in and assassinate people. When you, uh, we, you know, when you hear the name Judas Iscariot, many scholars have said, you know, Judas might have been a part of that party because of his last name, which is very similar to Sicarii, which means dagger carrier. How prophetic in terms of what Judas did to Jesus. In the end, he did betray Jesus and have him put to death. We also know that there was another apostle, Simon the Zealot. So even within the 12, we have some of the, these tensions going on. So if Jesus said to pay taxes, the Zealots would kill him. If he said, don't pay taxes, who was going to kill him then? Rome. Rome. He would be considered an insurrectionist. If he said, don't pay taxes, Rome would have looked at him as being a zealot. So they thought they had him. They thought they had Jesus. But we see Jesus' answer. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. You know, when he, even when he did that, I thought it was interesting how he did it. He said, it was almost like he didn't know anything about money. You know, what coin is used to pay the tax? It's almost like, show me that trinket. And then he probably looked at it, and whose, imi whose image is on this? Like, like he never saw it before. Almost making it of little value, because in fact it really is little value, right? Money, what, you know, it's, that's what Jesus, so Jesus was kind of playing with the money. Whose image is this? Well, then give it back to Caesar. In this way, Jesus was a genius, walking right through their trap and putting it back on them, asking them the question, whose allegiance is in, what allegiance do you serve? Who do you serve? What is in your heart? Who do you give your allegiance to? Well, what is God's? What an image. This image of a coin that has a, an image of an emperor on it. What about each of us? We're God's coins. We are God's coins. Made, each of us, made in the image and likeness of God. Each one of us, precious, precious to the Lord. Right from the very moment of our conception, our minting, you might say, right? God marks us as we come into existence. 
with his own image and likeness. This has been, we are in the middle of uh, Respect Life Month, still, still a few weeks left. And we know as Christians, we especially have to stand up for life from the moment of conception to natural death. And we're living in a time and age where that life is not being respected on so many fronts. We have many issues in our nation, that, you know, but abortion still looms. And I've preached on this before. 63 million children have died because of abortion in our nation, because it's been legal. And you know, the whole nation was duped into accepting it. Bernard Nathanson, who in the end became Catholic, he at first was an atheist Jew, uh, supporting abortion, and he, he talked about how he tricked the nation, made up false statistics, got people to accept abortion. And it, you know, everything he did worked. And then he started to see the true reality of abortion, what it really is. People euphemize it, even celebrate abortion today. I was uh, just so sad and disgusted. A number of years ago when Andrew Cuomo from New York, he directed that the World Trade Center's 408 foot spire be lit up when he signed this bill called the Reproductive Health Act, which basically allowed for abortion didn't protect life at all, and he wanted to celebrate it. And they did lit up the, the pink tower, you know. Just, I mean, think, think, of, think of this, that we're celebrating the, the, the death of the baby as though it's something good. When right becomes wrong and wrong becomes right, we are in big trouble. It's interesting in the, in the scriptures this weekend, the first reading was all about Cyrus. Do you know who Cyrus was? He was a pagan king, um, a Persian king who came in and they conquered Babylon who had conquered Israel and destroyed the temple. Well, this Cyrus came in and conquered Babylon. And he was prophesied, it was prophesied that Cyrus would be God's anointed one to help Israel, this secular pagan king, un, totally unlikely character to help Israel. And that's in fact exactly what he did. He was the king that allowed Israel to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. So when you look at world history, you also see the, this kind of pattern again and again. Different leaders that God chose, secular leaders, unlikely leaders, you wouldn't necessarily look at their morality as a, a shining examples, but they did a good thing for God's people. And God used them. Thinking of Constantine, I was thinking of Charles Martel, Charlemagne, you can go through history. You have these secular leaders then who went on to do good things. Something for us to think about. You know, brothers and sisters, we have to end this abortion in our nation. The responsibility is on us. We, what can we do? Right? Well, we can vote. Yeah, get out and vote for sure. We got to support pro-life causes. People say, well, there's other issues besides just abortion. And yes, there is. There are a lot of fronts. Right? We have to fight the, the battle on many, many fronts. We have to fight against racism, for sure. We have to fight against inequality. We have to fight for the protection of the poor, immigrants, others. But if we don't fight the fight against the unborn, we've lost the big battle. The ship's going down. If we don't, stop abortion. That's the number, that's like the giant mountain of issues. The weight of that is huge. 
There is nothing that's proportional to it. Nothing. I, little, I worry, you know, as a priest, I worry because I've, I've been around now for I'm almost 60. And it worries me that there are more and more young people who don't feel the weight of this problem anymore. They kind of dilute it. And I see that as a huge problem. It shows that our consciences are, are being deadened. Laws do make a difference. Laws teach. Laws form. Law, laws can form consciences, right? So when the law of the land this has been that abortion's okay, people actually start to believe it. It's never okay, brothers and sisters, never. And I'm praying. I grew up in a democratic family. We wouldn't support abortion. But look what happened now to the party. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, when, when there was war, I wasn't for the Republican Party either. R Iraq was immoral. You remember that war? Over a million people died. That was an immoral war. So political parties, you, you get into trouble. You have to look at issues. You have to look at issues, policies. Policies. Not people so much, but policies. Where will the policy take us? As Christians, we have to really struggle with this. And I know we will. I know you will. Mother Teresa, when she, visits our, when she visited our nation many times, she said, please don't kill children. She asked them to give the children to her, that she would take care of them and find a place for them. She said, abortion is profoundly anti-women. Three-quarters of its victims are women, the babies and the mothers. If you want a love message to be heard, it has to be sent out. We have to live that love. We have to show love to people who may disagree with us. We have to keep that love in our hearts burning brightly. Don't get tired. Don't be afraid. She said, it's poverty to decide that a child must die so that you may live as you wish. She commented on the lack of peace in our nation. She said, if you have no peace, it's because we've forgotten that we belong to each other. We must not be surprised when we hear of murders or killings, wars, hatred. If a mother can kill her own child, what is left but for us to kill each other? Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love, but to use violence to get what they want. That is why the greatest destroyer of love and peace is abortion. Words of a saint. We have hope, right? Yesterday is gone, tomorrow's not yet come. We have today, so let us begin, she says. Never grow tired of doing what is right and good. Every time we do something, the smallest of things, right and good, the world becomes a better place. In this life, we can't do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Brothers and sisters, in the gospel, those who refused to give their allegiance to God, who didn't give God what belonged to God, the, their very selves, their allegiance, their hearts, their minds, their reputation, when they didn't let that go, they ended up killing Christ. Remember what the chief priest said when Pilate brought Jesus out before, before them. He said, here is your... This is the man. This is your king. And they said, no, we have no king but Caesar. Let us not imitate that, but rather imitate St. Paul, who in the end said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. We prayed at the beginning of this Mass that we might conform our wills to the will of God. 
So let's keep praying and supporting each other, brothers and sisters. We need each other to do this. We need to know we're not alone in this. And we can change this world with the grace of God. This coming Friday, someone just came up before Mass and said, Father, you know, this Friday is a day of fast and prayer, as every Friday is. It is, indeed. I want to encourage everybody to pray and fast. Pray and fast. We have an opportunity. We know that God's grace can do far more than we think or imagine. And let it begin in our own hearts as we wrestle with all these issues. May God help us and bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand now together and confess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, through God and through God, begotten God made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and trust and confidence, let's bring now all our needs and petitions before God our Savior. For the Pope, bishops, and priests, May they inspire in all people the desire for a true relationship with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That civil leaders will use their authority to protect and provide for the poor, the oppressed, and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our Lord will bless all parents in their role as missionaries to their children, as they bring Jesus to our society, our parishes, and our schools. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's people may be active in carrying out their civic responsibilities and may choose leaders who will build a society that respects all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our parish will grow in devotion and love for the Holy Eucharist and be filled with the charity and compassion of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill or experiencing suffering, may they be healed according to God's will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of this parish, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Teresa Leidy, Olin Barnes, and Kathleen Hinderer, 
May they be received into the everlasting banquet of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of intercessions, the intentions of the St. Thomas Powerline prayer team, and the prayers we hold in our hearts. May they be united to the prayers of Mary, the Mother of God, to the prayers of St. Thomas the Apostle, and to the prayers of all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the love you give each of us. You create each of us great love, your own image and likeness. And you sent Jesus, your own Son, to save us, to bring us one day into your eternal kingdom. Father, help us to do your will, to give our allegiance to you and your ways. Help us to know how to do that in the specific, the day-to-day -day actions and words that we uh, utter. Please bless uh, each of us as we go today and bring your message of truth to the world. And we offer this in all our prayers through Christ our Lord. of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mystery we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. Let a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
Church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, the merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 